Good evening and welcome to tonight's um, Dallas ISD Bonding Construction Services community listening session for the new replacement school for De Gaulle Elementary School. We're excited to have you join us tonight. And we have um, people joining us in various ways. I'm gonna pause now um, to allow our interpreters to come in and give instructions on how to participate through our Spanish language um, parents and family. Thank you, Jackie. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Si usted desea escuchar esta presentación en español, puede seleccionar la opción en español en la parte inferior derecha de la pantalla, en el mundo. Si por algún motivo no escucha el intérprete, regrese al inglés y vuelva a intentar la opción en español. Si aún no funciona, favor de avisarnos por el chat. Desafortunadamente, la opción de interpretación no es compatible con las computadoras Chromebook. Le recomendamos que intente entrar a la reunión utilizando un teléfono celular, ya sea iPhone o Android, una computadora PC, iPad o tablet, para escuchar la reunión en español. Gracias. Thank you so much. Again, thank you for joining us tonight for the Dallas ISD's community conversation and listening session for the design of the new Degolia elementary school. This is a follow-up on a charrette we had a couple of months ago, and we're looking forward to hearing your participation. If you're joining us on as a part of the Zoom call, there will be an opportunity for you to participate either by entering your questions, comments, and suggestions in the chat room, or you can go to the um, reactions button at the lower part of your screen, raise your hands, and we'll allow you to go off mute and ask your question directly to the design and project team. Don't worry, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, we also have an opportunity to hear your suggestions, comments, and for you to ask questions. Simply do so as comments on the Facebook Live post, and we will share those online as well and get those answered. At Dallas ISD, we're committed to ensuring that the community's voice is heard as we're designing and making changes to our elementary schools. Our goal is to be excellent community partners, uh, both with our community and with our parents, and to be the school of choice as your educational partner for you and your family. With that being said, it is my pleasure to introduce tonight the amazing principal for Degolia Elementary School, Principal Herschel Carter. Principal Carter, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Bell. Great, great introduction. Uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, coming tonight. Uh, very excited about taking this next step uh, of this journey together as we look at ideas of what our new campus uh, will look like. Uh, remember, our input is vital to this process. Uh, so as a team, as we hear our ideas today, Think about uh, suggestions on how um, we could improve and what our campus could look like. Because again, our ultimate goal is to have the best environment for our scholars. And so with that, uh, thank you again, and let's get started. Thank you so much, um, Principal Carter, not just for particip your participation tonight, but for everything you do every day that you and your staff do to ensure the safety and the educational excellence of our kiddos across the district. We're so pleased and happy to have you as on our leadership role. Speaking of amazing leaders, we're so fortunate tonight to have a trustee for this particular school join us tonight. Um, Dr. Edwin Flores, if you would like to make opening remarks now, that'd be great. Sure, it's my pleasure. It's great to be here. Very excited about this next meeting. Um, first, I want to thank all of you for participating. Uh, and I want to uh, thank the voters who voted in favor of the bond to make this possible and the taxpayers who pay for this school. Uh, we, we really appreciate their support. Uh, and so that we can build this new school. I'm very excited. My our daughters attended to Gallier uh, many moons ago and very excited about uh, the process. Uh, one, one thing, so, so just to set the expectation a little bit and, and to be brief, I mean, you're not going to be seeing any final designs in this presentation today. This is very conceptual still. Uh, this is the point in time when those big ideas and concepts can be changed because everything is still not, you know, final. Uh, so the cost of making changes now is just some time and some electrons being moved around on a computer. Uh, and there will be more meetings uh, as, this, as this process continues. But this is, again, this is very conceptual work here. It's a very, very high level. Uh, we, we had a, a meeting for Marcus a couple of weeks ago uh, 
uh, and folks were expecting to see actual designs and floor plans and stuff like that. That is not the stage that we're in. The design process takes a long time. I'll let the architects to, you know, describe, you know, how long it takes. This is a lot of work that goes into making these buildings, but this is, this, this is the starting line. We, we heard the ideas, the needs in our last meeting, and this is going to be the very, very beginning of the process. So thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. I know that a lot of the leadership team is here watching, so I really appreciate everybody participating. Thank you. And thank you for joining again for joining us, um, Trustee Flores, and thank you for your work and everything that you do um, as a trustee for Dallas ISD to make us a better place. Again, um, as the trustee Flores has shared, tonight we're, we're here to hear back from our initial charrette where we heard about, heard the community's ideas for their big thoughts. Our theme for Bond 2020 is think big, B-I-G, and that's bold, innovative, and generational. We wanna ensure that we're uh, meeting the needs, not just for children today, but for long into the future. Um, with that being said, the Bond program is being led by Deputy Chief Brent Alfred. Uh, Mr. Alfred, if you would come forward now and just kind of set the stage and we'll be ready to go. Yeah, I'll be brief and thank you for that introduction, Jackie. Uh, yes, I'm Recording in progress. Yeah, I'm the Deputy Chief of uh, Bond Construction Services and this is our second meeting. Our team is excited to be here. We've been working behind the scenes uh, with your program manager, AECOM, and your architect, uh, Keiko Architecture. I think you've got a great team. This is going to be exciting. Uh, this is a $3.5 billion program that, as Trustee Flores, Flores said, the voters approved. And you are one of the 14 replacement schools that are in this first phase. So I, kudos to you guys. You guys are getting a real jewel and a real treat uh, that's really going to impact the city. As uh, Ms. Bell mentioned, you know, we went over your first three big ideas in the last meeting, and we're going to continue with that theme. Uh, consider this more of a taste test today that the architects are going to present to you. And, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to your feedback. So I'm not going to belabor the point. I'll go ahead and introduce your fabulous architecture team, uh, Miriam Camargo and Robert Diaz. You guys can take it from here. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're excited to be participating on, uh, on, on this project and look forward to getting uh, input from the community. Um, so with that said, let's start the presentation. Uh, just to recap, um, you know, everybody's familiar with the site. You're seeing an aerial view of the existing school um, and, the, and the play fields to the north uh, and then uh, to the west of it, you have a city of Dallas park. Uh, so as we look at the property, the property is actually what you see right here defined uh, the rest of the land to, to the west is actually city of Dallas park land. Um, so we'll be focusing on, on the parcel of, of, of property that you see here for the design of the school. Uh, our charge by, for the district um, you know, we, we've got the existing school and we're building a new replacement school on the existing property. Uh, while, we're during, while we're in construction, uh, the existing school will, will remain operational. Um, so that directs our efforts to the open fields that are to the north um, adjacent to Dartmoor Drive, uh, where we're focusing uh, the placement of the school. Um, We've taken the, the major program requirements for the 650 uh, person school and grouped them here, as you see, uh, having the core academic functions, administration, media center, the gymnasium, and then cafetorium kitchen spaces. Uh, it's just building blocks uh, that a little bit later you'll see we'll start getting an, an architectural form to them. Uh, we also have the play structures and coming from our previous meeting, uh, we've included a generous uh, community garden space that will be accessible from, from the street so it can be maintained during the summer uh, days. And then to the south of uh, the new facility would be the new play fields uh, for the school. Uh, so once we start placing these, these building blocks, if you may, on the site, uh, you start to kind of take 
a gander of what this is going to start doing uh, to the available land um, and, and how much room these building blocks uh, take. Um, following through, as we build the school, we're starting to give it an architectural form uh, to the different functions, the gymnasium, cafetorium, uh, media center, uh, core ed educational uh, and educational spaces on, on that light blue wing and then the administrative spaces kind of facing uh, Dartmoor Street. Uh, once the facility is constructed, um, then we'll be coming back and demolishing uh, the existing school to make way for additional parking, the community garden, play, field, uh, play structures, and then the play fields. That'll be kind of reversed now from, from what's currently there right now. So, uh, looking at some of the previous imagery that we presented in the last charrette, um, you know, these kind of mid-century influenced imagery, what was most appealing to, to the people that participated last time. So we're kind of basing our, our you know, broad, broad strokes of design and concept on this kind of imagery and something of having a mid-century influence to it. Uh, we're not gonna try to replicate a mid-century building, but we're definitely looking at, at having that kind of vocabulary influence the design. Uh, which is also what's happening kind of around the surrounding neighborhood. It's kind of a mid-century uh, type neighborhood that we have. Um, looking at, uh, again, from the previous community input meeting, uh, some of the words that stood out in, in, in what we were hearing from the community, as you can see, kind of the biggest things was a modern style, uh, mid-century, uh, and something that's neighborhood oriented as well. Uh, you know, welcoming and, and you see all the other uh, words that make part of this wordle uh, that was kind of summarizing what we were hearing from the community. So having looked at the, at the bubble diagrams previously and kind of taken in consideration uh, uh, what we heard last time, uh, we've kind of started to develop a massing model for the school. Uh, so the, the placement, we've placed the, the wings, uh, the classrooms of the school um, towards the west uh, to allow uh, the kind of the drop off for parents to be as far away from the entrance uh, drive as you see there, uh, placing administration uh, towards the front. And then you have the gymnasium, cafetorium, kitchen and media center. Um, off to the, to the left of the building. Uh, part of the, the approach that we took um, is not only, you know, we're, we're making the classroom wing and all those associated um, spaces their own space. Um, and then it's separated from the more public areas of the school uh, with the media center kind of being the heart of the school and kind of connecting both the private student areas in the areas that you would see more uh, parents involved. Uh, something worth mentioning that you see in this mo uh, massing model, we do have both two story spaces and one story spaces um, because of the square footage that's available. Uh, you know, we're, we're approaching the school with a, with a two story classroom wing um, to be able to fit everything in the available site while still having the, the existing school uh, remain functional. Uh, moving on to the big idea uh, that we heard, you know, the, the biggest focus I think that we heard last time was, was an, an emphasis on collaborative spaces uh, in, in being able to integrate those opportunities into the school design. So coming up next, we'll have a series of images that we'd like to get some input from the community and uh, perhaps on the chat or uh, with your votes, you'll see how it here. Uh, which of these images are more appealing um, for, for everybody? So having said that, looking at the entrance of the school, as you enter the school, we have three different examples of, of lobby spaces. Uh, entry option A, entry option B, and C. Um, entry option A is, is a more sculptural uh, element that we're seeing here. 
a bold color statement. Uh, as you see here, it's uh, taking a nod to the pavilion that's that's in the park right now, uh, which would, would talk, be kind of interesting to have a play uh, with those two options, to, with that uh, pavilion. Uh, option B, it's a more modern kind of clean design. It incorporates a lot of uh, wood tones to help warm up the space, but it's a very clean and open uh, design. Again, like with all of them, uh, trying to maximize the amount of natural light uh, we're getting. And then entry option C, uh, kind of a smaller scale, more intimate, uh, and it does have a lot of playful uh, elements uh, in it that we see. Uh, and then having the, the little pops of color, uh, definitely a more um, smaller scale, more subdued scale. Um, so if we go to, um, the, uh, to the poll, I'm not. Are you guys seeing, sorry, are you guys seeing the instructions for the poll on this? We're not seeing the instructions. We're seeing just the actual poll themselves. So I think you need to, we need to have the poll link posted. I'm not sure why it's cutting off the. the if you instructions. can, sorry, go ahead. If you can share the, if you can, um, we can post the instructions in the chat room, and I can also share them on on um, Facebook if that would be helpful. Yeah. Hey Ed, Edgar, if you could post the put the instructions on there for the poll, we have both. Uh, you can enter it on online uh, via the computer, or if you want to text with your phone, you can do the same things. Hopefully, uh, here Edgar Morales with our office will be posting that shortly. Great. We do have a few comments here in the comment section while we're waiting for that um, information to be posted. The first one is a question. Um, just making sure they understand correctly, the building the building is being designed for a maximum capacity of at 650 or what capacity is the building currently being designed? It, it is being designed for a capacity of 650 students. Okay, great. We do have, we do have someone commenting that, uh, and are entry options A and B two stories tall and option C a single story? They, they are uh, volume wise, yes. But it, I, I would not take this as a direct, uh, it's not going to be a copy. We're not choosing a design here, but more of a feel uh, in, in what we think about the spaces. So I, I don't want to uh, mislead anybody that you're going to get this precise image. It's just more of a question of which kind of image makes you, you know, have, have a better reaction or, or which one makes you feel more like it's a space you would like to be in. Okay, for everyone on the everyone on the Zoom call, if you can take a look, we have posted the link to the polling site is on the is included in the chat room, so you can go there and follow the info, the information there. You can do it either online or through text messaging from your phone, similar to how we did in the last charrette. You can text to. The information for texting is there as well. And if you're joining on us Facebook Live, we're going to share the same information on Facebook so you can participate in this live poll. We will be sharing the polling results as they come in. And if anyone would like to share anything um, in their thoughts, certainly raise your hand now. We can um, have you come off mute and share any thoughts regarding these, regarding the three options that you see available at this time. So, and we'll give it a couple of minutes so that we can see the poll populate and, and see what input we're getting from the community.
Great. Again, if you're joining us on the Zoom call, the information for both joining the poll on the computer via computer or a smartphone are there. The text options are also in the chat space. If you're on Facebook Live, we include that information um, as posts in the comment section on Facebook as well. So we look forward to hearing from you. And if anyone has any questions this time, feel, feel, please feel free to um, come off mute and let us ask, ask those questions you have or comments. It looks like the live polling isn't updated on that graphic, but I do have the results here. Uh, the poll is full and it looks like we have 56% for entry option A, 36% for entry option B, and 8% for entry option C. Okay, we do have another question. Is there an option to have an actual auditorium rather than a cafetorium? As at as this time right now, no, the, the, the only option is the cafetorium. Uh, yeah, not, <clears throat> let me add to, add to that. So those are the ed specs that the, that the board approved uh, to have either a cafetorium or a gymatorium, I think they call them. Uh, that's what we've been doing in all the new schools that we built. If you look at George Bush Elementary School, that's what they have. Uh, so those, those, are, those, those are the aspects that the board approved. Okay, would the cafetorium have the same equipment and ambiance of our current auditorium to accommodate the annual musicals that we produce? We will definitely design something uh, that, that will accommodate the, the annual musicals that you guys produce. The, equip, the equipment uh, will be, well, it, it will actually be, I would suspect, upgraded that, than what you currently have there. Um, however, it, it is still, uh, you know, you're doing dual functions. So it, it's not going to be like it's a dedicated auditorium, uh, but definitely it will be able to, to accommodate the functions. Right. We do have a number of persons who are saying how excited they are about this project. And um, we have another question coming in. The Gordia ha having a real auditorium is something that makes us special and stand out amongst our other neighborhood schools. I would love the district to reconsider this. So uh, Trustee Flores, there we go. That's a comment that came in as well. Yeah. Okay, so on that, we'll, uh, let me, Move. And could you share those polling results, the, the final polling results one more time to make sure we, we can share those out to make sure everyone heard those? Yeah. Can, can you just put them on the chat, Edgar, please? Just Thank write you. them down since it's not populating for some reason. So looking at the cafetorium space, cafeteria space, uh, we've got three different uh, options that we're looking at. Again, we're kind of focusing on the collaborative spaces uh, that we'll have. Uh, you know, option A um, space is a lot more playful with a lot of color uh, integrated in it. Uh, option B, it's a little bit more of a corporate look, uh, allowing for, for as much daylight as possible into it. Uh, we know it's got this exposed structure uh, expressed in this uh, concept. Uh, and then uh, option C is a more neutral palette uh, with some pops of color on the floor. Um, and I'd love to get everybody's reaction on these images and, and, and see which one's more appealing. Are we using the same polling device information for this one as well? Yes. Okay. So again, everyone, if you would go to the polleb.com, um, someone said they had an issue with the poll on Facebook saying the poll was full. So we may want to check that as well, Edgar, on the back end. We, um, one person said they want to make sure that we have thought of the carpool and the carpool line in all of our designs. And people are questioning about the cafetorium 
and whether there is a stage available. There's a concern about there not being staging, a, a full stage available in the cafetorium or gematorium area. Yes, right now the, the, the program does include a stage space for the cafetorium, so you will have um, a, a stage available for that. Uh, and then if, um, uh, without going back to the site plan, which we can do here in a little bit later, if you look at the bottom left, we are including uh, a couple of lanes for a carpool. Uh, so you'll have, you'll be able to stack two lanes of traffic for carpool in order to maximize the amount of carpool that we're giving the school, as well as having a fire lane uh, that can kind of bypass the whole thing. Okay, here's another great question. Will a cafetorium prevent DeGordia from remaining a Dallas voting location? Mr. Alfred, you had, uh, I believe. No, I, I can't see that eliminate us from being a, a voting, uh, voting location. As long as it has ADA access, uh, we should be good. So again, we want to hear your voice on the selections for these particular, and, and let me ask a question for clarity to clarify for everyone. What you're looking at for these images of the cafetorium or more of the look and feel, correct? Like the use of color, natural lighting of those type of things. It's more what you're looking for people to react to. Am I correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So these are not the design, final designs. These are simply no. elements, look and feel. Um, if you look at the uh, incorporation of color, lighting, and those type of things that, they're, that the design team would like to get a reaction to. Yes, the, the design solution, solution will be specific uh, and unique uh, for the DeGoyler School. And it's something that we'll develop uh, from, from the input of the meetings as we go along. So starting with the, the first meeting that we had and building on that knowledge, uh, going through this meeting once we have an opportunity to kind of get everybody's input and then we'll build uh, on uh, that way uh, to, come up with a, to, to come up with a final design. Okay. So, Go ahead. There's another question in coming regarding the cafetorium and its function. I don't know if this would go to Mr. Afford, if we'll go to the design team. If someone could kind of enhance and explain the functionality of a cafetorium, um, you know, what it really is, how it functions, how it operates, and how it, um, and the move going from the cafetorium um, aspect for the district. That's, been, that's being asked in the chat room as well. Yeah, Roberto, you want to take a stab at that? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, what, what a cafetorium entails really is we're combining both the cafeteria space and the auditorium space into one volume. Uh, both spaces are kind of big open spaces, so they lend themselves pretty well to have a combined function. Uh, and typically when you're having uh, events in, in the auditorium, you're doing it in the evenings and stuff like that. So, you know, you, you have the opportunity to reconfigure or move the uh, the dining tables out of the way and populate the space with chairs uh, for parents for whatever function is being performed. Uh, as such, you know you're you're kind of what essentially what you're looking at is you'll have somewhat an auditorium space with its own stage and off to the side uh, you'll have access to the food service lot. So that is to say, when, when the cafeteria is not in, in use, we, we can close off the, the, the food service area uh, and focus everybody towards the stage area uh, and, and really have that kind of efficiency of having a space have, have uh, multiple uses instead of just one dedicated use. Great, does that, I hope that answers some people, someone's questions. And we do have some polling results coming in for the cafetorium. Um, right now, the, for the cafetorium, option A is at 20%. Option B, with that natural lighting, is leading the way with 56%. And then option C is 24%. And also, if you're in the, I also placed a, we have a brand new school, Eddie Bernice Johnson Elementary School. That is a new school that is designed to these particular aspects. I did put the link to that building so you can see some of the photographs of an actual cafetorium in use. It's in the chat room. 
If you're joining us on Facebook, you can check out the um, and see the new designs of the elementary schools at www.dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2015. Again, that's dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2015. We do have images there of our newer schools and um, Eddie Bernice Johnson is a brand new school that was built under bond 2015 and it does incorporate the cafetorium design as a reference. So we'll move on to uh, the next space that we're uh, looking at right now, which is the STEAM spaces. Uh, you know, there's, there was a big focus on STEAM type education for this campus, and it's something that they're really trying to push forward uh, as part of the educational experience for this elementary. Um, so we, we have three different uh, images of different STEAM rooms. Uh, you know, the first one being, uh, kind of an exposed structure, a lot of very playful. Uh, the approach here is to really start highlighting all the structural, mechanical, electrical systems uh, to kind of give that, that space a lot of vibrancy and kind of movement as you see uh, in the image. Uh, in option B, it's a little bit more subdued. The structure and all the systems have been blacked out to kind of create that ceiling that kind of uh, opens up and makes the, the space feel a lot taller. Um, and then the last option, C, it's a little bit more of a corporate uh, lab-like look, if you may, a little bit more refined. Uh, again, still having kind of a, a, a interesting uh, design with the ceiling tiles, but it definitely makes it look a little bit more like a, like a labor, uh, laboratory uh, that you would be doing work in. So with that, let me uh, go to the next one and we can start collecting the the input. Okay, again, it's time to uh, cast your vote in the poll as well for STEM option A, STEAM option B, or STEAM option C. We do have more comments coming in the chat room. Um, the first is back to the, just some comments on the cafetorium and other designs. They're saying that um, for the big open spaces that they like, they need natural light, but for plays, they need a way in the cafetorium to be able to black out to have less natural light. But natural lighting throughout the building is, is a big concern and everyone's thumbs up on that one. There's a comment here with our STEAM initiative. I just, they just want to make sure that the arts gets an, as much emphasis as technology and science and the auditorium or the design within the cafetorium to accommodate and address those needs for the arts, which is of course the A in STEAM is very important. Um, someone asked if they could have a cafetorium and a flex space. And there's another question is this, is the room you just sold us, is it dedicated solely to STEAM? So I'll stop and let you ask, ask those questions. Yeah, the, the program does call for a dedicated STEAM, uh, STEAM room for the facility. So yes, it will be a dedicated space. Um, I guess I'm, I'm curious to hear what a, what a flex space, um, whoever's asking that question, what they refer to as a flex space, get a little bit more clarity on, on, on what they're asking. Okay, Ms. Pepler, would you care to go off mute and, and share your thoughts and be able to share additional information about what you have in mind as far as the flex space? Yes, I would love to, can you hear me? Yes, thank you so much for yes, joining us tonight. You. Awesome, um, I know that we can do like, have like a cafeteria, and have that as that space, but then have like a room that would be considered a flex space. So we could do like dancing in there. We could do plays in there. We could do a uh, band in there. We could do art, big art projects, big steam projects, big, like just a big open room with a, with more of a stage in it, kind of like your cafeteria. But for our school, it would be more of a flex space or a space that we could use multiple different ways instead of having this only one big room, maybe having two big rooms. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with that. Um, again, your voice and the voice and the input is very critical at this particular stage of the project. So we invite you to share your thoughts. Oh, we have another question coming in. I thought the STEAM was incorporated into everything that happens at the Goya. So this having its own room, is, is that something special or are there other ways 
that the STEAM options will be available. And also, um, we're having someone said that we're having difficulty finding the polling for the STEAM options, that the poll for the STEAM option was not showing up on the link. If we could make sure we check that, Edgar, on the back side. I will, I will say for uh, STEAM being throughout, throughout our campus, it's going to be instructionally, it's going to be a project. We'll have, uh, again, a dedicated room for robotics uh and exploration in that way maker space in our media center so we'll be kind of spread out spread throughout um i think this room feels like it might be dedicated to this to specific aspects of uh, our steam okay thank you thank you professor carter for uh, expanding upon that We do have another poll, a new link has been posted in the chat room for the poll regarding the STEAM options, A, B, and C. So if you go to the chat room, you can certainly find that there. I'm also sharing that information out on Facebook. So those of us who are joining us on Facebook, right now the STEAM option is polling. So we wanna make sure that everyone, we have enough time for everyone to get their input in on these particular options as well. Here's another comment. Um, I'd rather us have a STEAM room that includes an auditorium for the A in STEAM, not just a lab-like community tables for robotics and other technology things. Thank you for sharing those comments. We have more messages coming in on the chat. And again, if you want to go off mute, just raise your hand. We can certainly take you off mute. And again, um, just on the back side, we are experiencing some technical difficulties with the poll. Ms. Pepler, yes, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, I, I want to say for these people that don't know our school, we want our school to stand out. We don't want the same old, same old that you've done with all the other schools. We want DeGoyer to be this amazing new school. So to have multiple flex rooms or multiple lab rooms that you might not do to other campuses, that's what we're looking for. So as y'all are planning and designing, I'm pretty sure most of the parents, and if I'm wrong, please correct me and my friends, uh, my community, please correct me, but I would say that we are very much into the not being like everybody else. Okay, thank you I for sharing you those. Can, yeah, I think you guys can get there with some of the architecture. I think tonight's meeting is about getting the feel and flavor for where you guys wanna go. And our follow-up meetings, we're gonna get deeper into the program and the space plans, and you're gonna see some innovative approaches I think these architects are gonna to provide to you. Okay, we do have some comments coming from Facebook as well. Um, they, um, this parent, this person said they love the culture at DeGolia and they're excited to see these improvements. All right. So it looks like uh, we've got the input for the for the steam uh, feel for the for the spaces. So moving on to the next one, media center. Again, three different options of different looks. Um, option A being very clean, modern, and streamlined uh, space with a lot of natural light. Uh, the option B, it's a little bit more colorful. Again, with with the blacked out structure to kind of make that volume feel a lot taller than than it actually would be. Uh, and it's a little bit more intimate space um, than than in feel than option A. And then option C, really looking at bringing a lot of, of warm tones and, and wood, almost going a little bit rustic with the feel for it. Uh, not, not that we're doing something rustic here, but you know, kind of that, that wood tones uh, that makes uh, the space feel cozy and, and a lot warmer. So with that, let me uh, go to the next slide and, and start getting input um, on these images. 
And again, if you're having difficulties with the poll or any type of technical difficulties, if you're on the Zoom room, on the Zoom chat, you can certainly put your preference in the chat room to let us know your, uh, which one you, of the options you prefer. If you're joining us on Facebook, you can also indicate your preference um, as a comment on Facebook. So we want to hear your, and again, we're looking for the look and feel of each space, not the particular design. Okay. Here's a question that's coming through. Is there any, is there any a noticeable difference between a media center and a library or is it just semantics? Uh, there, there is, libraries have been morphing into more media centers. Uh, they're, they're not as book centric as they used to be. Uh, so what you're seeing in a, in a lot of cases is a lot more computers. Uh, and, and having that uh, kind of technological interface and interaction in those spaces. Uh, yes, there are still volumes in, in, in books uh, like you would in a library, uh, but the focus has shifted from just being a, a quiet space where you read your book to more of an interactive uh, space where you're dealing with all types of different media. Yeah, and I, I will let me add here something real quick. So when it comes to media centers, libraries, whatever we want to call them, we the Dallas ISD was selected by Apple Computers to uh, work on an innovation project that we're carrying out in several of the schools as pilot schools to kind of rethink what a library and what a media center is supposed to do. Uh, and that work is, is starting this year. We're very excited about that partnership. Uh, they selected us because of the amount of innovation that we're doing around our choice programs and other programs. So that's a very exciting opportunity we're bringing to our kids and then we'll, we'll deploy throughout the district. Thank you, Josie, for sharing that exciting news as well. Would anyone care to have um, to expand upon any thoughts on this by raising your hand and, and making oral comments? In the chat and on Facebook, option C um, seems to be is, is popping up quite a bit. Okay, I we'll, know the, we'll give it a few more minutes. Great. We'll give it a couple more minutes and make sure everybody had a chance to uh, record their uh, option. We have another comment coming through. Degoria is one of the campuses selected to pilot the READ, R-E-A-D program mentioned by Trustee Flores. What an exciting opportunity to be able to include that in the, the design for the new school as well. And way to lead Degoria. I see Ms. Garcia is doing her cheers as, as well as Principal Carter on, on again, leading the innovation, leading the way, way to go. Design to be a team effort, definitely a team effort, as you see, definitely. Fantastic. Design team, are we ready to share the polling results for the media center? Okay, thanks, Edgar. Yeah. What we're seeing here is the media center. Option A is leading the way at 50%. Apparently, no one liked but option P. We had 0%. <laughs> and option C is a close second with 46%. Okay, great. Well, with that input, that brings us kind of to the end of our presentation. We can definitely uh, like to open it up for, for any additional commentary or questions uh, from the community. Um, and if we need to revisit any other slides, uh, we can set, certainly go back to them um, so we can take, a, take another view at them. Okay, great. At this time, and thank you so much for the presentation. At this time, if you're on, joining us uh, if you're joining us on the Zoom call, that now's the time to have your voice be heard. Please feel free to raise your hand. You can go off mute and ask any questions or make any comments. Um, again, this meeting is to try to get your input and your thoughts about the look and feel and items to include. Oh, sorry, we have an update on the poll. Option B was polling at 
four percent, not zero percent. So we did have an update. So uh, on the poll for the for that particular part. But if you want to go off mute now, raise your hand. We can certainly call on you to share your thoughts. Again, the design team is looking for information like look and feel um, elements you would like to see included user spaces and those type of things as well. So please feel free if you're on the Zoom call to, wait, to um, raise your hand and we can um, let you go off mute to ask and make any suggestions or comments about what you've seen tonight. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, please feel free to share your comments um, um, in the comment section on Facebook Live and we'll get those answered as well. We do have a new comment coming in. Will there be oh, no question coming in? Excuse me. Will there be something like this for outside con, um, concepts for the exterior of the building? For example, a canopy would be a great place to incorporate the MCM. And if you could share with us what the acronym MCM um, to make it a butterfly roof is a nod to our current roof. Go back to that massing concept. Okay. So um, yeah, as we develop the the design, yes, we, we will. We'll, I mean, this this is pretty much a massing concept right now. But as we develop the design, uh, we will definitely get into more detail as to you know what what it'll uh, look like and, and look for the input that we need uh, to make sure that that we get a successful design. Uh, if you notice there, we we actually have incorporated a canopy. I think the the idea of it being a Kind of a butterfly roof uh, is definitely something that we can incorporate and it's a great idea for, for that kind of large canopy. Um, if you see it, it's kind of exploded up um, up in the air right now in this graphic, uh, just so we could see below it. Okay, great. Here's the, thank you so much for taking the time to collect feedback from our community. We love Degolia and we are very excited about this new building and what it brings to our community that we love so much. And thank you for choosing, uh, choosing Dallas ISD and Degoya as your educational partner as well. Um, we have another question. I may have missed where this, the main interest is to the school. Will it be on Flair, Sonnet, or Dartmoor? It will be on Dartmoor now. Okay, so if we're looking at Dartmoor there, just for clarity, what we're seeing is proposed is having the drop-off for the parents on Dartmoor. And I'm assuming that's the bus drop-off maybe off of Sonnet? And additional parking is that we're seeing, is that what we're seeing on this masking? Yes, yes. Okay. So, from what we understand, there there's not a whole lot of bus traffic in this school right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, the the buses would come off a of sonnet, and then you have additional parking there, and then the carpool lanes are the ones that are uh, facing Dartmoor. Um, again, providing plenty of carpool lanes so that we're pulling all the traffic off the street. Uh, in giving them an opportunity to stack on site um, uh, to pick up and drop off kids. Great. Um, there's a question about will the schools address change? Mr. Alfred, do you have an answer to that? Can you clarify the question? Will they address change? Will the, address, will the school's physical address change with it now being faced, the front entrance facing Dartmoor, will there be an address change required by, I guess, USPS? If we flipped it, yes, um, and that's something I want to talk to the architecture team about. Uh, maybe that might be a reason to keep it consistent. But like I said, we're we're early on in this process, but that would require a change. Okay, thank you. Uh, speaking of canopies, a canopy over the playground would be wonderful. That's just a thought. Um, another question coming through, many schools have incorporated outdoor learning environments as a result of the global pandemic. Have there been any discussions about any outdoor learning environments? Not, not as of yet. Um, like, uh, like, like we mentioned, we're still very early on in, in the uh, concepts, but that, that is a great comment and a great idea. Okay, wonderful. Um, our first grader, here's one of your, here's one of your students, Mr. Mr. Carter, Principal Carter. Our first grader is excited about the new images. She said it's important to have, to her to have lots of windows, comfy furniture and neutral colors. So one of your first grade student scholars is, is speaking up on behalf of your student body of what they would like to see in their new school. We, we encourage student voice at the Guardian. And so <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, keep it coming. There we go. 
Um, there's a question, I think we can answer this one on this massing uh, concept image about student par about parent parking. Where would be there be parent parking? It would be towards the front of the school, uh, as you see there. And it, it's very diagrammatic, I understand. But uh, you see the parking kind of off of Dartmoor. So you're accessing uh, the carpool lanes uh, will have a fire lane that goes around. So you'd be ac accessing parking parking from there. OK, great. Um, Ms. Smith, I second the outdoor learning environment idea with tables or benches set up outside as a classroom option on nice weather days. And someone else seconds having a canopy over the outdoor spaces as well. We do have a question either to Mr. Alfred or to the design team. Um, what is the project finish date and what's the timeline for this particular project? Uh, yeah, design, the, uh, oh, go ahead. Regardless. Design will take us through uh, beginnings of next year. We're looking to be out for bids. Uh, mid next year in i believe the if i'm not if i remember correctly the opening date is august or beginning of school 2023 no 2024 24 yes yeah, yeah. sorry mm -hmm. right. so for clarity we will look at the design being completed by next year and then it going to bid and construction beginning sometime um 2022 2023 yeah, late fall around this yes. time next year, we should be starting construction. We should be out to bid, receive our bids, going to a board, and just about to break ground around this time next year. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. We do have people who are very excited about canopies over the outdoor spaces and also an outdoor learning environment. That's trending very strongly, both in the chat space. And again, if there's anyone here, parent or student or a staff member who would like to go off mute and share your thoughts at this time, that, would, that now's the time to do so. Just let me know. Um, can I make a comment? Yes, go ahead. Um, I want to make sure that when you guys are doing the carpool, that parents will be able to park their cars and not interrupt the carpool area. We have a lot of volunteers at our school, so I want to make sure that we're being able to volunteer, park our cars, and not be interrupting the carpool situation. Yes, that, that is the intent with, with the way we're going to do the layout. Great input again. So we have another question. Will you be submitting bids for acousticians or do you really already have acoustic designers on board? Ms. Rice, if you wanna um, go off mute and, and give us more clarity on your question. Hi, good evening. Can good you evening. hear me? Good yes. evening. Mm -hmm. um, just the conversation with the auditorium versus cafetorium, it's crucial obviously to have an acoustician on board to make sure that you have the appropriate sound um, needs, you know, for your pre, for your performances that you mentioned. So I didn't know if if there was already a team on board um, looking at those options. Like we mentioned, we're we're very early in the design right now. Uh, I believe that the majority of the consultant team has already been approached, uh, but we'll make sure that you know we 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 do pay attention to the acoustical design of the spaces. And also, Mr. Alfred, am I correct that um, in doing these designs, as we go into more deeper dives, you do bring in like the fine arts, other acad academic departments to weigh in on design elements as well? Yeah, correct. Yeah, we'll start meeting in small groups with those uh, certain specialties from fine arts to athletics to the academics to the uh, 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 you know, food service people to get that type of detailed input and bring on you know, consultants to support that. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, is there a place for playground next to the school? Yes, there will be. Uh, let me back up the slide here. A couple, so. Uh, so this, this the, the blue kind of bubble that you see just south of the school, that's where we will be placing the, the play structures. 
the lighter green becomes the community garden space, and then the the fields down below are just the open uh, play fields. So it would be directly, you know, it's adjacent to school. The idea is that all the kids can circulate to those play areas without having to get into the into the parking or or crossing streets or anything like that. Wonderful. Coming through from Facebook, there are a number of comments who are um, encouraging the use of natural sunlight um, and natural lighting to make sure we have natural lighting um, uh, rather than light bulbs. Um, health matters. So we want to make sure they incorporate that the design incorporates ample opportunities for natural lighting is coming through from our Facebook um, participants. And oh, big question. What about bathrooms? Uh, Ms. Shepard, if you want to come off mute and ask the question, I'm not certain if you mean by student bathrooms or staff bathrooms, or if you could just come off mute and expand upon your question, that'd be great. Okay, she's saying student bathrooms. Yes, there, there will be uh, plenty of student bathrooms. So typically we look at, at the building code requirements for the number of bathrooms that are required for, for a facility this size. And we'll make sure that we intersperse them in the facility where it makes sense and it's um, you know, centrally located to the, to the areas. Okay, we have another comment here. Our students, and this is from one of the parents, your student voice being heard as well. Our student will, would also like to advocate for a quote, a bunch of dolphins painted on the outside in quote of the building. So again, that's the student voice being heard as well. So I'm thinking we're hearing more about graphics and those type of things and students want to make sure they're incorporated. Another question, what about bathrooms for parents? Will there be a bathroom or, or, or bathrooms um, des or a bathroom designated for parents for those volunteers? Yes, there will be bathrooms uh, for, for, for adults, if you may, uh, whether teachers and, and parents or volunteers. Okay, great. So, and to answer the dolphin question, we, we are certainly looking as a design team to make a nod uh, in the design to, to the mascot. Uh, we're not sure what, what, what form that's gonna take, but we definitely have that in mind. Wonderful. One another comment coming in that they love the nod to the mid-century design, um, and they're really wanting to make sure that um, the cafetorium meets the needs and the intention of the auditorium uh, as an auditorium as well. Well, it seems though we're we're kind of rounding down as far as questions and comments on the meeting, and again we encourage everyone to continue to participate and continue to have your voices shared and heard. And we thank you for joining us this evening. Um, this meeting is being recorded and the video and the presentation as well as the recording and the video of the meeting will be shared at www.dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 meetings and also bond 2020 new schools. So there you will find all the information and there's also a form that will be posted out there. So if you know someone that couldn't attend tonight's meeting or you'd have a thought after tonight's meeting, you can certainly go and use that form to submit your thoughts, concerns and ideas and suggestions. They will be shared with the design team as well. So with that being said, um, Mr. Alfred, if you want to share next steps. Yeah, sure. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I, I appreciate the great feedback. Uh, we've given these architects some some good challenges here to you know go back to the lab and uh, see what they can produce for us. But to get into some of the spaces, uh, I'm gonna uh, lean on Principal Carter to help me uh, form some small team that the architect can kind of meet with and bounce some of these ideas off quickly while we. Uh, refine the spaces and refine the exterior. And so when we come back to you, I'm thinking in December, you know, we have some images to show this bigger group of what we've been doing and how we've developed and matured this design. Uh, but great comments and uh, love what I've heard tonight and, and looking forward to our next meeting. Before we close, I do want to share a couple more comments, that late comments that came in. Again, thank you so much for all the input and work and a brand new space for our dolphins. Um, 
again about the bathrooms and ensure the bathroom spaces for the younger grades will have separate bathrooms per um, code and per the aspects. Um, we have a thank you so much for having these meetings and for allowing us to give input and feedback. We love the direction it's going, keeping the mid-century modern flavor, but please reconsider the steam room actually being an auditorium with other flexibilities. So with that being said, um, Trustee Flores, if you would make, like to make any uh, closing remarks. Just want to thank everybody for participating. Let everybody know that we're having these meetings. They can watch the recording. Uh, and, you know, we look forward to the continued feedback loop. This is, again, the beginning of the process. That's why I said so much. I said that at the beginning. This is very conceptual at this time. But you can see these are just big ideas now starting to take some form. Uh, the smaller groups are the most effective way to, to get input uh, in, in the process. And, and uh, you know, Principal Carter, I'm sure, will be leading those, uh, those sessions, getting, getting the input from the boots on the ground. The folks in the building is so essential in the community. So, so please, please, please continue to, uh, to provide your input. Thank you. And thank you again for joining us, Trustee Flores. Um, and of course, we will in the beginning, the meeting where we began with the great leader for this amazing campus, who is innovating and providing great options for our students, Principal Carter. Man, this is really, really good intros and outros, man. Thank you, Ms. Bell. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, but again, thank, thanks everyone for taking time out uh, tonight and kind of giving our feedback on what we want our future to look like. Again, we design our future. That's our uh, motto this year, our theme. For the Dolphineers, we design our future. So this ties right into it. So again, thanks for the feedback. And when we reconvene, we'll enter the next phase of the process and just refining, refining it down. But again, thank you and, and have a great night. See you in the morning, 7.30, the doors open. Thank you again. And thank everyone in the community for joining us at tonight's meeting. Again, you can keep track of this and other Bond 2020 meetings at dallasisd.org forward slash Bond 2020. We hope, here's wishing everyone a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. Good night. <laughs>